Are you uneasy or ashamed about your lack of productivity or ability to manage time? Author Adam Grant calls this next title the most important book ever written about time management. Welcome to Audiobook Reviews in 5. This is Jana, also known as Jana. In today's episode, I'm reviewing 4,000 Weeks, Time Management for Mortals, written and read by Oliver Berkman. Four thousand weeks is a reference to the average human lifespan of 80 years. In this book, Oliver Berkman confronts the problem that belies popular productivity advice, and that it usually fails to address the fact that our lives are finite, not very long, and that we have limited control over the course of events. I've already listened to this audiobook twice, and if you're a regular listener of this podcast, you might remember I'm a huge fan of Berkman's first book, The Antidote, which remains on my top five books list. I've revisited that audiobook many times, so when I heard that Berkman was planning to publish a book about productivity, I eagerly counted down the months, weeks, and days to publication. At the time of this recording, 4,000 Weeks is the top seller on Amazon in the category of Sociology of Death. This is not a book about life hacks, like achieving inbox zero. Instead, Berkman argues persuasively that our thinking about productivity and efficiency is a trap, and that the day will never arrive when we finally feel we have everything under control. The real problem isn't our limited time, Berkman argues, but rather our troublesome ideas about how to use time. Berkman illustrates the many ways in which we sense that, despite all of our frenetic activity, we rarely get around to doing the right things. Quote, we sense that there are important and fulfilling ways we could be spending our time, even if we can't say exactly what they are yet we systematically spend our days doing other things instead, unquote. Using his own failures as a productivity geek to illustrate the futility and moments of hilarity in his quest toward time mastery, Berkman organizes this book into two themes. The first, called Choosing to Choose, begins with a reframing of how time was spent as a peasant in medieval England, oriented around tasks and communal activities. This is compared to how we treat time today as an abstract entity, something to be saved and spent as efficiently as possible. Berkman isn't romanticizing the past here. He's illustrating how we've taken abstract ideas about time and apply them to our culture and our lives as if they were tangible material realities. In part two of this book, Beyond Control, Berkman addresses existential realities that can help us reframe how we perceive our control of time using examples such as the loneliness of the digital nomad life and the unexpectedly reassuring quality of cosmic insignificance therapy. Overall, Berkman's narration is excellent, as always, and this audiobook is a marvelous listen in just under six hours. Don't take the shorter length as any indication that this is light or forgettable, though. The quality of the writing is so good that I frequently stop to re-listen to chapters just to appreciate the flow of ideas and Berkman's dry and self-deprecating sense of humor. He makes a funny example of Franz Kafka as the worst boyfriend ever for his terrible indecisiveness over a prolonged engagement and praises Sir Rod Stewart as a radical for pursuing a hobby as unsexy as building miniature train models. Berkman handles politically fraught questions with humor too, introducing the time-obsessed philosopher Martin Heidegger with his decade-long membership in the Nazi party, adding, quote, you're going to have to decide for yourself whether this exceptionally poor life choice invalidates his thoughts on how we make life choices in general, unquote. For listeners or readers looking for opportunities to practice a limit-embracing philosophy of life, 
Berkman finishes up with 10 tools for embracing your finitude or your mortality as a guide for accomplishing more of what really matters. My personal favorites include consolidating your caring about important causes, seeking out novelty in the mundane, and deciding in advance what to fail at. I'm personally adapted to avoiding anything to do with sports or parenting, for example. These techniques don't require a workbook, but you might find it helpful to reinforce your practice with written notes or journaling. That's all for this episode of Audiobook Reviews in 5. Thanks for listening. If you have not yet done so, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to Audiobook Reviews in 5 on Anchor, Apple, Spotify, and many others. By subscribing, you help increase the profile of this podcast and chances of other listeners finding it. I look forward to checking in with you all again soon. Please stay safe and be well.